everybody will abandon me at a certain moment, perhaps only for a few minutes, but everyone will be overcome by cowardice. And you will think that it would have been better for your own safety if you had never known me. But she who understood and knows, she will always be with me. And you will become mine once again through her. With the power of her unshaken, loving faith, she will draw you to herself and will thus bring you to me. Because I am in my mother and she is in me and we are in God. I would like you all to understand that both you who are my relatives according to the world and you friends and children in a supernatural way. Neither you nor anyone else know who my mother is. But if you knew, you would not criticise her in your hearts, stating she is not capable of keeping me subject to her. But you would venerate her as the closest friend of God, the mighty woman who can obtain all graces from the heart of the Eternal Father and from her beloved Son. I will certainly come to Cana. I want to make her happy. You will understand better after the wedding. Jesus is majestic and persuasive. Judas gazes at him. He is thinking. He then says, and I will certainly come with you, with these friends, if you want me because I feel that what you say is right. Forgive my blindness and my brothers. You are so much holier than we are. I bear no grudge against those who do not know me. I'm also without ill feeling towards those who hate me, but I feel sorry for them because of the harm they do themselves. What have you got in that satchel? The tunic your mother sent you. It is a big feast tomorrow. She thinks that her Jesus will need it so that he may not look out of place amongst all the guests. She worked from early morning to late night every day to have it ready for you. But she did not finish the mantle. Its fringes are not yet ready and she's very sorry about it. It does not matter. I will wear this one and I will keep that one for Jerusalem. The temple is much more important than a wedding feast. She will be so happy. If you want to be on the way to Cana at dawn, you ought to leave at once. The moon is rising and it will be a pleasant crossing, says Peter. Let us go then. Come, John, I'm taking you with me. Goodbye, Simon Peter, James, Andrew. I will see you on the Sabbath evening at Capernaum. Goodbye, woman. Peace be with you and your house. Jesus goes out with Judas and John. Peter follows them as far as the lake and helps them cast off. And the vision ends. Jesus says, and this is quite important. I've, I've said before that Maria Veltos gets these visions out of order. Not always, but often out of order. And there's a huge number of them. So it'd be a right mess to try and put this together um, on your own without help. And to do it in a way that's seamless. Because if you get visions out of order and they're not genuine, they're going to have all kinds of discrepancies, even when you try to knit the fabric together because there'll be um, discontinuities, um, characters out of place in various ways. But Jesus is the editor here. He's telling her what 
to put down in writing and what should be put where. And so it becomes this, from, from what I'm reading, a five volume seamless set or the up-to-date present 10 volume seamless set. So Jesus says at the end of this vision, when it is time to arrange the work in order, insert the vision of the wedding at Cana here. Put in the date, 16th of January, 1944. And before I finish, just to note that you see the family tensions here. You see why in the Synoptic Gospels, you have this um, scene of Jesus' family members coming down to get him, to bring him um, back um, to Nazareth, I assume, because they think he's gone mad and Mary is with them. And so the Protestants have a great time with this saying, oh, look, look, she thought he was mad. She, she didn't really, um, she's not this perfect woman that you Catholics say. Well, Mary does go with them at some point, but it's unwillingly. She's not wanting to, to um, criticise Jesus' mission. She just isn't happy that uh, these family members are, are doing what they're doing. And so she wants to be with Jesus. You can see how, especially how Alphaeus, who's still alive at this point, he does die um, in the very early stages of the ministry. Um, but he's very hostile to Jesus. And that hostility is transmitted to his four sons, James, Jude, Joseph and Simon. Uh, Mary Clopas's wife is not hostile, but she's the wife and she has to be obedient to her husband, Alphaeus. So she doesn't, she tries to avoid controversy. And it's quite proper. But you see, when Jesus is going on mission, there are all kinds of criticisms and all kinds of pressures on him. And they're trying to blackmail him. You saw that, referring to his mother. Oh, this woman, she's, you're the only son. And so you must do the right thing by her. And then there's the, um, Judas earlier on mentions, the, the rulers that Jesus may be coming up against. They don't accept the, any approach that differs from the mainstream standard approach. We all kind of find this in, in modern politics, but in a non-lethal way. Uh, well, generally in a non-lethal way in the West. If you deviate from norm, the normal political position, then the media are on you and they blacken you and you're trashed. And so you are not likely to win anything in an election. But here, in the first century AD, it's a potentially mortal risk that you're running. So all these pressures on our Lord, they form the backdrop to his mission and it shows that he, his sole comfort is in is Mary, really. I mean, has, yes, Judas today has becomes an apostle. Um, James becomes an apostle. Simon wavers throughout the ministry and only at the end does Joseph I think is the eldest, realise that he, he's, he was wrong to resist Jesus. He was never an enemy of Jesus in the sense that he would betray him, but he was, um, he was taken in by members of the Sanhedrin who would say, oh, you know, your, your, your cousin is really, you know, going too far. You should rein him in. And for what Joseph thought was for the good of the family. This is Joseph, the son of Alphaeus, not Saint Joseph. Jesus' foster father. For the, sake of, for the sake of family, Joseph is very opposing Jesus' mission. And he does say, look, this is risking your life here doing this. And it's true. So that's the, uh, the backdrop to the wedding of Cana. Uh, 